Security. Welcome, everyone. It's the Mike Tech Show, show number 882. Tonight's show, going to talk about the beginning of the trip down on the airplane starting out in Philadelphia on Sunday morning. You can't make this up. I have to share that uh, because it's tech related. And then this is also tech related where I cut my index finger after arriving here. And then we got an outlook tip that there's a funny story for me because it's, it's a, it's something that I always wanted to revert back. And then we're going to talk about that searching fixes. I am going through a nightmare with clients in searching email and searching server shares. So I've got some links and some things I've been trying, things I'm working on. Um, a banner page that keeps printing that I can't turn off. And Taz in the chat came up with a great idea of, you know, it's not obvious and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to try that. And then I got a little stack of uh, listener email that I will get to. So first, um, on the airplane on Sunday morning, getting ready to fly to Florida and the pilot comes on and says, Folks, we, we're going to have a delay here. We have a light that is coming on, but it's a, it's like an indicator light, but the light, it they know it's fine. Like, it's a false light. But they can't take off until the maintenance crew signs off on this that it's okay. So they recommended that we reboot the airplane. So the pilot says, we're going to reboot the airplane where everything's going to go dark for about five minutes and then things will start to come back up. Just like rebooting your computer. <laughs> I, I'm sitting there just stunned. I have never heard of an airplane rebooting. But it's amazing that rebooting is what not only solved the problem and it delayed everything about an hour, hour and a half, you know, to go through this process. And it was more the paperwork delaying everything than it was the actual item. But the reboot fixed the problem. And, the, you know, I had to share that. I was like, what do we do when someone calls us, you know, first did you reboot? Did you, if it's a printer issue, did you pull the power cord and then wait a minute and then put it back on? Or what about your routers or the access point? How many times do we tell the client to reboot? So I was on an airplane that got rebooted. So that's one. So second strange little story. When I got we t I turn the water off when we're going to be away for a while down here. So, so this way there's a leak or there's a problem. You know, you, you, I'm not going to come down to a mess. So I have to turn the water back on. That's a lever that's kind of under the house, inside, in the back, that, that I got to reach my hand in. And there's a lever that I got to move to turn the water on. And I do that. But on pulling my hand out, there's like a little metal grate there, and I cut my index finger. It's not a bad cut. You know, I got some Neosporin on it, and I put a Band-Aid. So now I come to my computer, and I need it to reboot. And you know, I have the fingerprint recognition. Well, guess what doesn't work? It's off now, but... When you have a Band-Aid covering the only finger that your fingerprint... Now, of course, I was able to manually type my password and get in. But that like kind of messed things up. Because my RoboForm I have tied to the fingerprint. I have a couple things tied to the fingerprint reader. And what do you do 
and I, I'm lucky that it was the side of the finger. So for a couple days, I I just repositioned the band aid to kind of loop just covering the one side and not the the actual fingerprint of my index finger. What if you were to cut the finger that you have to use for your fingerprint and you know, what if there's a cut on it? What's going to happen? You're, is it going to read? I don't think it will. So that's, I, I just realized I got to register another finger because, you know, just in case, you know, I mean, I could have done that and went through everything, but, um, just a story I had to share. Has anyone run into strange fingerprint problems because of a, of a bandage or a band-aid or an injury or, and then maybe you had to reset it for your client. Now I can't do it on the other hand because now I'd be reaching around or I'd have to like relocate the fingerprint reader to maybe the other side. And I like my index finger because the thumb, I have to do like an extra motion and it's not worth it. The index finger is just perfect. I just straight down, hit it, piece of cake. And that's great. But Never thought of that. So two stories involving tech that you wouldn't think of, you know, starting me out Sunday morning. And I'm like, boy, this is what I'm in for this week. And luckily, knock wood, everything here, everything was in great shape. Um, the last hurricane had passed by and not hit my area. So uh, I've been uh, uh, very, very lucky and every everything's looking good. Um, looking forward. My wife's flying down tomorrow. Can't wait. So uh, I'll be picking her up at the up the airport. So before I get into the other stories, I have to address the it's it's October. But if you're a Phillies fan, it's Red October, and that's why I'm dressed in my. I got my uh, uh, Phillies t-shirt, Phillies cap on. I haven't started the Phillies podcast yet. That's at the top of my list on the agenda, but I've been so busy. I haven't been able to chance to get that worked to start doing that. <laughs> that, But even tonight's show was in possible jeopardy of the time starting because I like to get on for the pre-show at 7 o'clock on Twitch and then start at 7.30 for the recording, which I was able to do. But the Phillies were scheduled for game three to be on Thursday if it was needed because the, the wild card series is best out of three, but the Phillies took care of business and was able to win the first two games, so I was able to do regular time. Uh, the, the game was scheduled for 8 o'clock, and I was – uh, in Discord, I posted that, hey, I would start this show at 6 p.m. because I wanted to make sure it was all done so I could watch the Phillies. Uh, I have tickets that I'm not going because I'm in Florida. My uh, two sons were at the game yesterday. And if you follow me on Facebook and you see the the the, the Facebook banner that I have, that picture was from my son Ryan's camera, that's the seats were behind home plate all the way up. And that was when the Phillies clinched at the last out in the ninth inning. And the he caught the fireworks perfectly. Everybody celebrating on the field. It was a, such a good picture. I'm like, okay, I'm stealing that. That's that's my cover for Facebook. So if you, if you see that, that was a... Uh, uh, that was a real pick from my son's camera. So I was glad to see that. So uh, enough of the Phillies. Um, they got to, they, they go into Atlanta uh, Saturday and uh, that we beat them last year. So got to beat them three out of five now. And uh, my, my kids have tickets. They're going to be going Wednesday night for the first home game, which would be game three because they're away for the first two games. And let's hope they clinch and they win the first three and then keep moving on. But this is my time. You know, I, I mean, yes, I like all sports, but I am a very passionate Phillies fan. And uh, just looking at my room 
and all of the memorabilia and the different Phillies things that I have around here. And that's something I'm going to save for one of the podcasts that I will do a, a really deep tour of all of the memorabilia and the different things and the signatures and the paintings. I have unique paintings that, you know, you, you can't get anywhere that were uh, painted by a famous local artist in, in Philly. So there's lots of things that I, I, I'm going to be talking about. So I'll try to get that first show out and, and advertise that. Okay. I keep talking about it. I got to do it. So I figured I talk about it enough. I'm going to do it. So when Microsoft in their infinite wisdom started changing things with Office 365. The one thing that clients woke up to one morning was instead of the bottom left-hand side where you would click mail, calendar, full, you know, folders and notes or wh whatever you were looking for. Well, now it's up in the upper right. I finally figured out, and I'm going to have, it was a YouTube video. It's so easy. And I'm gonna, the first link for tonight's show is a quick YouTube video that I found on how to change this. Wait until you see how easy it is. You just click file. You go to options. Then you go to advanced. And then right at the top where you have Outlook panes, there's a little checkbox, show apps in Outlook. Uncheck it. Click OK. Restart Outlook. And they're back at the bottom. So when I found that, I was so excited. I was like, yes, they go back to where I've wanted them. And then... I started using it and I'm like, I don't like this. I got so used to where Microsoft put those app options in the upper left-hand corner that now it was a struggle using it this week. And I was like, this was when I was putting the show notes together for tonight. I was like, okay. I, you know, the airplane, the finger, and the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, I found this Outlook solution, so I'm going to mention that I had to revert back. I can't believe I've been conditioned, and that's what happens. You know, you get used to something, you start using it, you thought it was bad, now now it's part of my life and the way I, I run Outlook, and guess what? I can't go back. So if you still have clients that it's annoying or yourself that it's annoying, we know how to change that. And it's just a little checkbox. And I can't believe that I didn't find that when it was first happening. So maybe that option wasn't even there. I'm not sure because that's something that's been happening. Microsoft's been pushing a lot of updates for Office and things. And there's been lots of anomalies that you know, throughout the last few weeks, I've been talking about all sorts of Outlook fixes and problems, which leads the segue into searching Outlook. And I know Dexter in the chat may sympathize with me when searching email, even if it's on the web, and I swear this is a sure web problem. As a matter of fact, I actually got a tech last Friday with, on a conference call where they remoted into my client, I remoted into the client, and I proved that it was on their server, their Exchange 2019 servers, which I think have a fundamental problem ever since their migration to Exchange 2019. There has been issues with SureWeb. And the tech, when we were done, said, uh, let's create a temporary password for your user. When I'm done with it, you know, he, he asked our permission that he can go off and 
confirm everything that he's seeing. Where when we go to search, it was it it, it, it was terrible. You know, sometimes you would get your results, other times you wouldn't, and indexing does not fix this. So I have another client that's battling this and he's traveling. And when he gets back, I'm going to have to, again, I, I don't, I don't know what to do. My one client that they are so upset, the one that he remoted into with is an attorney and they are demanding to be migrated direct to Microsoft. So I may move them from SureWeb directly to Microsoft because of this issue. That's how important it is. So I hope that that's not a trend that I'm going to start doing it. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm just going to have to do it because, um, there it, it's, it's, it's not acceptable. It just, it just isn't. I'll tell you another, here's another problem. And this was moving from Exchange 2013 to Exchange 2016. And this is one of my biggest clients. They moved, and I'm not sure how they're migrating, but this is a couple months after the migration, users that we absolutely deleted and deleted the licensing for reappeared. Like, out of nowhere. Almost like somebody relaunched the migration again because these people have been deleted post migration. And it was like they they appeared. We know we deleted them. We know we did. This caused a licensing issue too, because now you don't have enough licenses. And when we went to create an account, when we went to purchase a license, we weren't able to create the, the account <laughs> because we were over and didn't know it. So we had, once we deleted those accounts again and then created them, there was still something that SureWeb had to change. And I don't know what they're doing at the back end, but I'm not happy and I'm throwing them under the bus. And I've been a long time SureWeb uh, user and and reseller of uh, so my my warning is if you're looking for hosted exchange just go direct to microsoft don't mess around you know i don't know how app river is but i know a lot of people use that and resell app river but go go to the horse's mouth go go directly to microsoft 365 business and set it up and you know just live with Microsoft's issues. And I guess, you know, it's the devil, you know, you know, and, um, it's, it, it is, is an issue. Now Dexter's chatting about using Microsoft. Here's why I'm not going to do see SureWeb is a Microsoft reseller, but here's the problem. If you have a real problem and you bought the Microsoft hosting, uh, Microsoft 365 through SureWeb, you can only call SureWeb for support. You cannot call Microsoft directly for support. And I will say this on Microsoft 365, when I was di direct with a client and I had a question, I got a tech that stayed with me till that was completely resolved and I was very, very happy. I When I engage Microsoft 365 support direct from Microsoft, I don't have anything bad to say. I can't say that with SureWeb. And it depends on who finally takes ownership of it, but you got to make sure you get the right tier, and that's battling. And that's my client in an email response on the ticket saying, if this doesn't get resolved, we are leaving. I am demanding that MHS Consulting move us away from SureWeb. That's when we got the attention. And I followed up saying, I have a lot of clients with you guys. And if this is going to be the way it is, then I will, I will leave SureWeb and start migrating. 
and that threat got the retention. So let's see. I will follow up on how that is, you know, and, and what happens. So searching is still up in the air. There's another searching issue, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, it's all searching. This is, I cannot search in specific folders in a shared drive. So it's really just re-indexing on the server. Now, I kicked that off last night, and I have not followed up in whether this solved the problem or not. And there's a couple things to try, and I'm going to have that link in File Explorer Search not working. And then let's see what happens. Uh, I Again, I have to follow up for that. Before I get to email, I have a new client opportunity where I sent out a proposal yesterday and I'm waiting to hear back. And this is to help an office with compliance. And that is from a listener who listens to the show and reached out to me where they're not happy with their IT support. So here's the plug. If you are in that situation or know someone in that situation, it doesn't matter where you're located in the world, I can remote in. I can take care of a lot of things, helping with policies and compliance, helping monitoring and supporting all the workstations, whether they're Windows or Mac. So drop me an email if there is an opportunity. I have gotten a few clients through you know, one in South Florida, Andres, thank you very much. Um, Don in Ohio, thank you very much. A couple clients in Ohio. Uh, Tom, a lot of you guys know Tom Bull. Thank you for the New Jersey client. You know, so there are a lot of clients that I've gotten through you, the listener, and I so greatly appreciate it. And boy, you want to you want to show support for the show, it, it doesn't get any better than that than uh, giving me the opportunity uh, to uh, bid on uh, supporting a client. Uh, that That is great. So let's get to some email. And the first one is from Kate. And this was in a follow-up to the problem with forgetting your luggage. And this is the Kate's, I'm not going to read the whole email, but respectfully, not every problem requires a tech solution. I traveled on business for years. I do some traveling now. I have never, ever left anything behind, let alone a big heavy bag. What I do before I leave the hotel room or an Airbnb or my friend's house is conduct a check of every surface in the room. Now, I got to admit, that's something my wife and I, but you know, you got that, you know, the flip flops that were under the bed that maybe you didn't get down on all fours and look. So I've forgotten things. I've forgotten small things, but we absolutely go through my wife and I when we're you know traveling we're staying somewhere we we went before we walk out the door we go through everything we open every drawer and one of the big things is forgetting your custom shampoo and things that you brought that are still in the shower or in the bathroom so there's always something and I we we always find something you know when we do that you know, that walkthrough because I was asking for tips on devices or things like the air tags and, you know, what can we do on especially expensive, important items, which you should anyway, just in case, Hey, what if you leave it on a bus or leave it in a Uber, you know, great story. My son and I, we're texting. He was coming back from a concert. He left his phone in an Uber and the Uber guy seen the last number 
that where he was chatting with, and that was me. And he called me, and I was like, "Who?" And and so we talked for a minute. And I said, "You're hang on to that." I said, "So you're close by, and my son will reach out." So my son, number two son, used number one son's number three son's phone called his own number and talked to him. And I said, man, you better get him an, a, a, a nice little tip. And the Uber driver, he had someone to take care of, but then he came back to the house and gave him his phone. He was very, very fortunate. All right. So this is from Alaskan in that's in the chat. And he sent me this link and it's called tile.com so then there's also uh the tracker tech is getting tiny so this is this is a uh samsung uh site on um the uh getting the uh trackers so uh, i'll have these sites in the show notes and thank you for sending that for helping track now this is I am not happy about this and I definitely have to put it to the test. This is from Kate who sent an article from windows central and I am sad to report Microsoft kills the loophole that let windows seven keys activate windows 11 and 10. Yes, that was still working. And here's where we would use it. When we come across a client that bought Windows 10 or Windows 11 home and they really need pro, well, we had a process and then use, I still have a bunch of Windows 7 Pro keys because of systems being retired or being replaced that were Windows 7. We'd take a picture of that key. That key's valid. That's a great key to have and has that really the key's worth a hundred dollars because that's what it would cost to upgrade from home to pro. So I am very, very disappointed that this article, they talk about how that's now gone. We can't do that anymore. I am still going to put that to the test. I'm going to take a system and try to go through the process of home to pro and go through that activation process and let's see what happens. So definitely, and, and, and I actually am going to have the opportunity soon because there's a system that's Windows 7 that I am redoing as Windows 10. So it's going to want a key and I'm going to try to use a Windows 7 key and see what happens with that. Uh, I'm actually going to be working on that remotely tomorrow a backup server crashed with one of our clients where they have multiple servers and we shadow protect to a backup server and then even with that we still do online with magnus box and th this segues really really nice anyway that system crashed and it was windows 7 so we really got to redo it. That has always been on my list to do. So uh, this is, uh, the you know, just something I got to I gotta go through. And this is an email from Dexter. And he says, you may want to turn on immutability for Magnus Box to protect against ransomware. It is not on by default. Dexter, thank you so much because I did not know that and I will look at that and turn that on. Mike, if you're listening, um, why is that off by default? Is there some kind of a reason? And that's, I want to reach out to, you know, before I just turn it on, I want to reach out to technical support. Why would they not have that on by default? And is there some kind of technical reason I should be looking at you know, is it performance or is it something else that, you know, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Why would you, why would you not want that on? So uh, Tom, I'm wondering if there's a reason behind that and, and, and Mike or Sean, anybody who's listening there, if you, uh, you know, reach out to me and let me know. 
and uh, I'll follow up with uh, an email asking that. So, oh, support has to do it. Hampers the admin account. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that is it for tonight's show. And uh, just a couple housekeeping housekeeping issues. Um, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Michael Smith MTS. Click like, hit the bell to subscribe. Really appreciate that. It'd be very cool to, you know, keep the subscribers, you know, let's get those numbers up. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, the Discord forums, every, every listing of the show notes, I have the link to where you can join those forums for free. Just click, sign up, join, and then announce yourself in the forum saying, hey, I'm not a robot. I'm here, you know, one sentence, and we'll promote you so you can have access to everything. Uh, don't forget Twitch. You know, if you're listening to this during the week or whenever you're listening or watching the show, Hey, join us live, you know, on Twitch and join the chat. It's fun. It's Thursday nights. Normally, if I tweet and Facebook, if I'm going to change or if I'm not going to be on one night. So follow me there. So this way, you know, or you can always just go to MikeTechShow.com and you can read. I will pin if I'm not doing a show this one week or um, maybe doing the show on a Saturday or something because I can't do it Thursday night. I usually pin that post to the top of the website so you can see that. And then, of course, really appreciate your donations. There's a donation button. If you could do, hey, I have people that subscribe and have monthly donations, and I so appreciate that. And if all donations are welcome to help Keep the lights on. Keep the show going. Really appreciate it. But if you send me clients, boy, there's nothing better than that. So that's, that, that is awesome. And we will do a very good job in taking care of them. That's it for tonight's show. Go Phillies. And see you back here next week. Same time, same channel. Bye-bye, everybody.